Hey everyone, just getting started on a design here and I wanted to film this design just so you guys could have some more insight on what I do and uh, given the discussions that are currently uh, going on throughout social media, I wanted to display a few things that may put uh, some of these discussions at rest um, or at least just to validate uh, my claims. And uh, this is that I believe Sarek is capable of producing um, really, really nice proposals for anterior cases. And uh, I don't know why some of the Sarek, uh, if you want to call them gurus out there, would uh, deny this. But And I don't think that they are, but um, it's just that... I, I, you know, I believe that Seric is a, is a great software, is, is all I'm getting at. And for those of you that may be struggling with anterior designs or proposals, hopefully you can get something out of, out of this video. And that's the primary reason that I want to make this video. So anyways, uh, this case, uh, I'm, just, I'm just designing it for a Seric user, a great Seric user. And uh, we're just going to dive right in. Um... There's really not much more to touch up on. Uh, I will fast forward through most of this. I may even uh, crop the video just to keep it short. But in the meantime, I will slow the video down to touch up on anything that I may be doing. As I mentioned before, this is a case that I'm designing for a Sarek user. I'm going to design the case. The Sarek user, the dentist, is then going to mill the case in-house and uh, then go ahead and see the restorations that uh, were made off of my design. Because there's a bridge involved with this case, and this user is using 4.6 software, there is a bug within the 4.6 software that doesn't allow the user to import a DXD file that contains a bridge design. You see, typically a case would be sent to me through Strata Connect. I would design the case, send a DXD file back that contains the design. The dentist would then import the DXD file and mill those crowns. But because there's a bridge, uh, I am designing this case via TeamViewer. TeamViewer is this little icon down here. It's a great app. It allows uh, someone like myself to remote access a computer that um, you're not directly in front of. And you could use this for many applications, not just designing teeth. But this is how we're designing this case today. And let's just dive right in. Right now we're setting the uh, model axis and uh, I cannot stress how important uh, getting the correct model axis is. Uh, you're, you'll be able to see, it's not uh, showing right now, but there's like a usually a cube icon right here. And when you click this cube icon, and I'll show you later on in the video, but when you click this cube icon, it, it allows you to uh, view the entire case from different angles. You can either click front, back, um, and then there's more of a local version, uh, the facial, the buckle, or uh, the mesial, whatever it may be. Um, you, can, you can click this button. Uh, typically, you're going to use the front button, so you can look at the crowns uh, uh, from the facial view. You're going to click front, and then the models will automatically go to the front position. And it references uh, this model axis to determine that position. So you really want to make sure that when you're setting this model axis, you're getting the uh, front view of the of the jaw, of the teeth, and you want to make sure that it's dead on. But it also comes in handy when you're designing because you can click that front view button and you're saving a lot of time instead of you know trying to adjust it to see the front. Um, you're saving a lot of time. That improves efficiency. And... Not, not only that, when you do click the front button, um, you know, multiple times to make your adjustments, you're always referencing the teeth from the same position. So there's a sense of consistency within your design. But I um, hope I'm not rambling too much. Let's just, let's try and get into this. Um, and the front view would be hard to determine. Usually how I determine the front view is there will be a biocopy scan and I, I typically request a biocopy scan within the biocopy folder or a pre-op scan within the biocopy folder when, um, when you know, doing one of these anterior design or cosmetic design cases um, because 
with the pre-op scan, you can then display the pre-op scan, uh, reference some pre-op photos, and then really determine uh, what those teeth look like from the facial view. But as for now, we're just going to make an estimated guess, and we'll just go with this. For now, let me improve the quality of the image. And that usually helps. Okay. Yeah, so this is all we've got, unfortunately. But, you know, there's still... We can reference the bicuspids, try and get those level. Also, the tissue level, we can reference that. Um, but this seems to be pretty accurate. Let's, let's move on. Okay. And... Let's start marking margins. The objective of this video isn't to show you guys how to mark margins or um, show you guys really anything other than the software is capable of producing um, quality proposals. And for those of you that are on the fence about doing anterior cases, this might offer some peace of mind um, as you as you dive into your first anterior design that hey the the computer's got my back it's gonna they're the software it's gonna it's gonna be able to help me out and I think that you'll you'll see that from this video okay so moment of truth And what did I tell you guys? The software is capable of producing really nice proposals. No, I'm totally joking. Um, this is what this is what the software would um, would I mean propose without the proper steps and protocols. Um, and I'm going to show you guys those steps and protocols. But one thing I told you I'd touch up on is this tool right here, the Cube. Um, I'm just going to go to show you. Uh, we've got the front view right here. When you click this view options and you click this front view, it's going to give you the same front view that you established in the set model axis. So that to me is why setting the model axis is important. There's other reasons, but this to me is the most beneficial reason to really um, get, the, get the set model axis uh, squared away. Um, again, I was completely joking about these being the final proposals. Because they are not my dear friends, they are not, and uh, I hope that some of you um, aren't getting proposals like this. You may be, but I, I mean, a proposal like this would be enough to scare me away. And I like to say, you know, wherever there's a will, there's a way. Uh, but still, this would be a pretty tough pill to swallow if you had to deal with these proposals. Let's be honest here. Okay, but anyways, another thing uh, that you that that may uh, benefit you guys and help you out. When you've got this glossy finish on the teeth, it's hard to really see the contours. For example, uh, whenever I'm finishing a case, you know, uh, I milled the case, and, and it's always fun being able to finish a case. I do a lot of design work, but uh, when I am finishing a case, I like to work with a matte finish. So uh, say we're, we're working with an Emacs case, your standard lithium disilicate crown. Uh, you've got two centrals right next to each other. Well, I personally like to contour those either in the blue state or I like to use uh, like a, a coat, uh, a matte coat that you can put over the crown to see all the grooves, contours, indentations, and whatnot. Um, but like I said, it, I like to do that in the blue state because in the blue state, the crown is a matte finish. Uh, after you... Uh, center or fire or crystallize the Emacs from its blue state to its final state, you kind of lose that matte finish and it goes into more of a translucent, uh, shiny finish that's hard to, it's just hard to see all, all of the fine details when there is a translucent, shiny finish. And that kind of translates into the whole digital side of things. When you've got this shiny finish, I don't even know why Sarek would have done this really because I, I really don't get it because 
when you remove it, and I'm going to show you guys that right now, when you remove it, you can see so much more. Um, let's do that. I mean, there you go. When you've got a matte finish, I mean, you can see just so much more. Now, I mean, look at all the grooves and, and whatnot. You've got, you could see your contour lines. It's more defined. There's just certain, th and when you throw it on, it's like all that just disappears. As if you, you're just going to vanish all of the imperfections with the design or the proposals. I think that that's what that tool's for because there is no need for this tool. So we're going to remove that. And now we're going to begin our process to uh, get the best results or the best proposals possible using CEREC or InLab. This applies to InLab as well. Okay, so first things first, we are in the design phase. We There's only so much you can do in the model phase. The set, um, the set insertion axis is important and the model axis setting that is important, but um, anything other than that kind of won't really affect the proposal. But um, now that we're in the design phase, first things first, let's get the parameters uh, situated where we want them. So we're gonna work on the bridge first um, with a bridge. Um, with really any crown, um, I like to keep the space from between 80 to 120. Um, if there's more undercuts than usual, maybe I'll go to 130, 140. Um, but that's if there are severe undercuts. There were no undercuts with this, but so I'm going to put it around 110 for the spacer, occlusal, and radial. Uh, and that's just for that crown. As for the interproximal contacts, let's put those at, uh, you know, just to where there's a little amount of green showing. Inclusal contacts, we can pretty much leave those alone. Those don't really apply to anterior cases. Most of the occlusion is uh, modified manually. Uh, minimal thickness, 500 is fine, 500. Uh, uh, marginal thickness, we can put that, you know, sometimes the software has it at default, uh, like 50. I think that's what it is at default, at least for my um, software and for a lot of softwares that I've seen seen a lot of softwares because I do this this whole team viewer action thing and I get to remote into other people's systems um, and typically it's at about 50 with uh, the lithium disilicate or Emacs uh, option selected but I like to keep it out 80 just in case we get some thin areas with the design at least the marginal thickness is thick enough so that you won't have any chipping um, if say the contour does get a bit thin at the gingival area and then last but not least that's pretty much all we're going to concern ourselves with we're uh as far as the parameters but we're last but not least we're going to click the apply for similar restorations okay done we're good there uh let's check number 11 to see if it did apply and it did um let's check number 10. it won't apply because it, this is a ponic and not a crown it's not a in quote similar restoration uh, for the genital spacing, let's go at about negative 100. Lingual, lingual opening, we can adjust that manually if we want, and we're going to click OK for that. Let's check the parameters for these crowns, and it looks like our parameters did um, apply to these crowns as well. So next, we're going to go to adjust morphology. There's only a couple things I'm going to touch up on here, nothing too important, um, but... Uh, I do like to keep the shape of the tooth at biogeneric because with this, you're able to use biogeneric variation. And biogeneric variation somewhat applies to our proposals. Um, it does because that is a tool that you use immediately after you get your initial proposals, no matter what case you're working on. This, is, this at least applies to my workflow and my techniques. Um, so we'll, we're going to leave that at biogeneric. If you like to use the shape tool, the steps and protocols I'm going to show you will apply to using this uh, tooth shape tool or even the database as well. There's just only one crucial thing that is really going to affect your proposals, and that is the position phase. This plays the biggest role in achieving uh, a nice proposal from the software. This plays the single most important role because what you're doing in this phase is setting up the computer to give you a good proposal. If you have the teeth, uh, the tooth position or the teeth positions uh, set to this, the computer is going to propose uh, crowns 
for where you set these teeth. And this is where the computer um, position the proposals. So I see what a lot of you are saying when you want the software to have a better capabilities as far as producing an accurate proposal because in the positioning phase it really dropped the ball but once you edit the positioning phase uh, the computer is capable of giving you a good proposal in the edit phase but you always have to work with the positioning phase and i'm going to show you the the most important things when you're um, positioning the t first let's get the lower jaw into play and this is going to help us determine the length what else is going to help us determine the length is the occlusal plane. You can see um, kind of where the incisal edge should naturally uh, align with the rest of the teeth. Um, so this person does have a pretty significant um, overbite. It's a deep bite. Um, but, you know, well, we're going to do our best. This is, you know, not every case is an ideal situation. But we're also going to use this view options tool that we set earlier to help us position because we can always go back to that and you can see we didn't get it completely accurate but still it'll it'll serve its purpose so let's let's start by setting the length and whoops uh let's not we're going to adjust them individually i never adjust them um you know simultaneously i mean i don't i don't want to ever say never but i you typically would would not even though it can be efficient, it just doesn't, you know, it just doesn't work for me. Okay, so what we're gonna do is set up the grid, and that's also gonna help us determine where to set the the uh, smile line and also the length. We're gonna be able to create a symmetric length by using the grid. And you could pull up the grid by either going to Analyze Tools and clicking Show Grid, or you could also click Control, hold that down, and then click G, G for grid. So hold control, the control button down and click G. That'll pull up the grid as well. So let's remove it. Um, let's go to this. We could use the lower jaw to help determine the smile line as well, getting it parallel with the lip, I guess. But if you say we set this to where um, these anteriors are horizontal, I would assume that the upper jaw is gonna be out of whack because I don't imagine these jaws are completely aligned with horizontal. And please forgive the sound. That is, well, I guess I can only hear it, but they are moving the steric right now. So hopefully that doesn't interfere with the connection. But you can see that the upper jaw is not, um, not parallel with the lower jaw. So we're going to disregard the lower jaw, go back to this. And we're going to use the tissue primarily and the length of the other teeth. So where the tissue is at right now, that's kind of where I would imagine, um, or where the jaw is set right now, that's kind of where I'd imagine it's parallel with the lip. We're looking at this tissue level, this tissue level, we're looking at the length, um, even though this is a cuspid, it would be a little bit longer than the bicuspid, and that's what we see here, my friends. So we're just gonna stick with this, where it's at right now. Let's let's try and get the length uh, ideal. You could tell these are gonna be somewhat shorter teeth, a little bit on the squatty side. Okay, and what we're doing here, I, sorry if I'm not, um, you know, elaborating enough, but we, we are just setting the length, so I guess, you know, I don't need to go too much into detail on doing that. That's kind of preference, really, but there's also um, some rules to follow. You know, you want to keep the smile line um, as ideal as possible, but what we're doing um, at the same time is we're positioning the tooth to... Uh, sit on top of the prep and within the lines of the margin um, as close as possible. We want, or between using the position tool uh, and the scale tool, what we're trying to do is fit this proposal of a tooth onto the prep as, as best as possible. We're trying to find that position and that size that'll fit that prep as best as possible because then when you go into the edit model phase, there's not gonna be much for the computer to adjust 
you know, to, to fit onto the prep. You've got you've got it positioned and scaled almost to where, you know, ideally it would fit directly onto the prep and onto the margin. So um, when you do go into the edit model phase or edit restoration phase, you want it to where the computer has to adjust as little as possible because you've got everything positioned so well, so well and scaled so well. Um, and, you know, part of this is you have to be realistic with your expectations. Uh, a lot of the preps that I work with, a lot of the um, previous tooth positions that I work with aren't ideal. So you can't expect for the computer to propose an ideal um, case or ideal proposals when you're not working with an ideal situation. So uh, manage your expectations, but um, you are able to get predictable proposals um, by using this method. So let's also bring the uh, minimal thickness into play, and that's also going to determine where we position the teeth and uh, how much we scale them. Okay, so this is, this length is, it'll, it'll do, but you, it's hard to predict where to position these without pre-op photos, and I can't stress that enough, pre-op photos, pre-op photos, and pre-op scans, pre-op scans, and pre-op photos, pre-op scans, and pre, you know, with, with a pre-op scan, you you have the reference of where everything used to be and with the pre-op photos you can see where that pre-op scan uh, was aligned in the mouth and what that pre-op scan looked like in the mouth so when you overlay that pre-op scan um, onto the prep scan you can determine what kind of adjustments need to be made based off of the pre-op photos but none of that was provided here, so we're we're really guessing. And in a lot of conventional dentistry, you you are guessing, uh, or, or conventional lab work, you're you're guessing. Um, and in that scenario, it is hard to determine or predict how a design will look in the mouth. But if you have pictures of what the mouth looked like before, and you have the scans that you can overlay onto the prep scan of what the mouth looked like before. It's your job at that point as a technician or as a designer or even as a dentist to ensure that you're getting predictable results because there's no excuse to not get predictable results if you have all the necessary info to, to produce predictable results. But um, let's carry on. And we're going to align this cuspid with the other one. So we're going to pull up the grid again, control G. And that's the easiest way to pull that up. I think we just click the wrong portion. So we've got the length established. It is going to adjust itself when we move some things around, but we've got the length established. Now let's look at the occlusal view. And this is what I mean when I say some things might get moved around with the length. Uh, these obviously need to be tilted back more, these teeth for the occlusion and to fit the prep. Tilt them back, move them back, could tilt them back maybe even a little bit more. And I noticed that when you do tilt them back like this, you're gonna create a really nice contour line. So it is beneficial, but again, you don't want like the the upper teeth that we're designing to, to prevent, um, you know, like a smooth function of the teeth and whatnot. So you do wanna be careful with that, but it is somewhat nice to create that retroclined look or appearance because it does it does uh, appear more natural, especially with the emergence coming out of the tissue. If you've got teeth that are protrusive, no one wants that. But this whole retroclined look, if you, if it's subtle, um, you know, it's nice because naturally the tooth is going. You know, this upper third portion of the tooth is going to emerge somewhat outward, somewhat protrusive. The body third, and these are just simple rules to follow. The body third is going to go straight down vertical, and then the incisal may come back slightly. It may come back a bit slightly. So you're kind of just naturally creating that the way that we're positioning these. Um, so again, let's move on. And all we're going to do with uh, this central is mirror um, what we did with this other central. 
as far as the uh, incisal position and the retrocline. And the way you can do that, um, let's go back to the front view and then tilt it up. But the way you can do that is just kind of, if, if there was a grid, which there is, this is gonna be the best way to show you. And I usually wouldn't use the grid, I'd just visually do this, but you want, um, you know, like where you can see where the central meets this white line, you kind of want that same portion of the central to meet that white line because that's going to create a, just a, more of a symmetric um, thickness on the facial. Uh, it's going to create more symmetric contour lines. And so that's what we're going to try and do. But the prep could also determine where that um, falls. And then what you could do to see if your tooth is positioned um, as close to the margin as possible, just hold control down. And you can see it's somewhat close. Ideally, this portion of the proposal would be dead on the margin. So maybe we can take them back a little bit, not so retrocline. And here's what I mean. Just bring them more vertical, I guess you could say, and then pull it back. And now we're closer to the margin and we're almost dead on the margin. If we rotate it just a little bit this way, we may be right on the margin. And damn, that is close, my friends. That is really close. And I hope that you could see just from what I'm doing, what I'm trying to share with you guys. Um, I may not be explaining this as best as I can, but um, I think that you can visually see what, what I'm doing here. And by taking the time in the positioning phase, that's what's going to give you good proposals. And that's what's going to make a design so much easier on you guys, is getting everything dialed in in this positioning phase. Because then this, if you get this right, the software will take care of you. It'll eliminate most of your fears as far as um, designing anterior cases. Because if you can get the positioning phase down, um, the design part's easy, really. Because if you get good proposals, the designing is easy. Let me make this a little bit longer. And now let's work on the laterals. And you primarily want to focus on uh, lining things up with the facial margin, the facial margin and the interproximal margins. But the lingual margin, you actually, it's, it's best to not stretch it out to the lingual margin because then you're going to create a thick incisal edge because then you're thickening up the entire back portion of this crown by using the scale tool. And I haven't even used that. But by using the scale tool, if you move it back, you're going to thicken up this portion. And you want to try and leave that as thin and dainty as possible, as possible, because it just makes for a more natural appearing tooth. Okay, now let's work on the laterals. Now I like to retrocline the laterals a little slightly more than the centrals. So just did that. And we're also going to tuck them like we're, we're lining up the incisal edge, but maybe just ever so slightly the laterals will be behind the centrals. And we may use the, oh yeah, you can see how close we are to the margin, which is good. Okay, so we've got the incisal edge lined up, and once we get the length lined up, which it just about is, that's good. They might be a little short, but it also makes for a more youthful look, and who knows, maybe, oh, Franklin, it's a male. They probably don't want really open embrasures. That's more of a feminine trait. So we're just going to stick with where it's at now, um, and then we're going to use a scale tool. You can see you've got this margin over here that's kind of... 
um, not lined up. I'm going to use the scale tool to line that up. And we may retro climb this a little bit. No. And if it's not dead on, it's okay. At least we got that with the centrals. That was pretty cool, but um, you just want to get it as accurate as possible. That looks pretty damn close to me. I think we're good. Let's do the other lateral. This, obviously, we don't have to line that up to anything, so we're just going to make it as symmetric to the other lateral as possible. This is a ponic. Quite a bit wider than the other lateral. Use the tissue to reference the smile line. The length of the lateral. Let's check the width of the centrals. It's good for now. We can adjust more in the model phase. The width of the laterals is actually decent. In terms of the symmetry, and let's check the cuspids, the canines. That's good. Let's save so we don't lose anything, because that would suck. I'm telling you, most of the, and, and uh, obviously the process is slowed down because I'm sharing um, everything with you guys while I'm doing this, but uh, most of the time that it takes for me to do a design and hopefully for you to do a design after you watch this video will be dedicated to the positioning phase. It really will. Um, so the length is good on this cuspid. We've got some exposed margin over here and nothing exposed over here. So maybe if we move it this way, it'll just naturally align. And I think that it will. Cursor. Yeah, that's good enough. Okay, so we've got this sucker positioned. Everything is in position, I think. Our proportions are good given the situation and the lack of uh, material that we have to actually predict um, where everything should be. I think that this is good. So this is the moment of truth. This is what I've been emphasizing to you guys. Um, the proposals that you get with the software can be decent. And we're going to focus on because there are, is some spacing issues over here. Um, that will need to be manually adjusted, but we're going to focus on these three primarily because these are all crowns. And you're going to just see how well these propose going from the positioning phase to the edit restoration phase because that's really where proposals kind of go out of whack. Um, at least that was my experience, and that's the experience that I see for a lot of Seric users out there. Um, everything looks good in the positioning phase. You go into the edit restoration phase and everything changes. But that's because the software is trying to fit these proposals to the prep. But if you don't do that for the software, then the proposals that you get are going to be out of whack because you made everything ideal in this portion, the positioning phase. But underneath the proposals, the preps and the two position and the emergence isn't ideal. So anyways, let's move on. Check this out. Watch how little all this is going to change. Didn't change much. Maybe that changed right there. All you got to do is smooth that out. Smooth that out as well. We're focusing on this central. All right, well... 
that is that's not ideal but um we've got some to work with and uh you know we can definitely make do with these proposals so what we're going to do next is we're going to go over to the tools and in my opinion this is part of the whole proposal um, we're going to go to uh, this tool first biogeneric variation and this is why we set, selected biogeneric when we uh, were in the tooth morphology phase because then you can use the biogeneric variation tool. Biogeneric variation, and I always focus on the laterals first because you've got references beside both of the laterals because the position of the tooth does somewhat change when you use biogeneric variation, so you're able to position it back to where you wanted it, want it after you use the tool. This is a man, so we're gonna consider them kind of a masculine tooth form. Now let's just stick with that. That's easy to, this shape is easy to turn into a masculine shape for a tooth. And you can see the contour lines are nice. Everything is nice. All it takes is a little bit of positioning. And to me, uh, this, is, this is all um, part of a system or a protocol. And it is going to be nice to rotate this tooth a little bit because then we're kind of pushing out the distal contour line, which will hide the connector right here. So that's that's good where it's at. It also makes it look a lot wider, but this one is going to need to be uh, wider anyways to get some interproximal contact. Okay, now you can see just from using biogeneric variation, we've eliminated kind of that bump right there, but we'll even get it better after. But look, just by positioning, using biogeneric variation and positioning, I mean, this is, th these are nice at this point, um, or they're certainly getting there. Certainly getting there. My friends, remove the keep contacts. You don't want the keep contacts when you're when you're using the positioning tool. And we're just positioning it again, but we're positioning it after we've used the biogeneric variation tool.
Okay, so really just with where we're at right now, I mean hardly any adjustments were made. And you could see just how just how good the proposal is. It's not a proposal um, under some people's terms, but um, really this the, uh, the adjustments that I made were filling in contacts, repositioning the teeth, um, and that's that's pretty much it, and marking this uh, margin for the bridge, which you'd have to do anyways. Um, so other than, other than that, you could see just like how well um, things can be to start out. Um, all we've done is we've gone from the positioning phase, we used biogeneric variation, repositioned the teeth, and then filled in the spaces with the anatomical two-directional tool. There was no um, form tool used. There was no, there wasn't anything else that was used except for anatomical two-directional biogeneric variation and the positioning tool. Um, and just with those three tools and the proper positioning, you can end up with proposals or um, a, a blank slate that looks like this. And something like this will can easily be um, modified to look really nice with the correct um, tools and techniques. And I'm gonna stop the video here, but what I will do is before um, this video ends, I'm gonna show you uh, the final design. But this is, this is where we've gotten so far in, in my book um, and a lot of people's book, because this isn't that difficult to get to, this would be considered a proposal, um, even though technically it's not. But let's, um, there's just some asymmetries here that I'm taking care of so you guys can see that, um, see that. But we're gonna start here and then uh, again, I'm gonna, before this video ends, I'm gonna show you the final design. Anyways, see you guys soon. So as I'm designing this case, uh, I realized that I wanna be as transparent as possible um, with, with these designs. So I will um, continue to film this design. All I've done so far was adjusted this contact, this distal contact on this lateral and I, I bring the distal contact back from the lingual so that you're not really interfering all that much with the front aspect of the crown. Um, pretty much bring it into con Again, like I'm filming this video with a case that is very less than ideal. I could pull up a case from my archive of cases that I've designed and bring up the most ideal situation and uh, tell you guys, hey, look at how easy this is. And I will be frank with you, um, it's not always that easy. It's just not. This is the first design case I've gotten today. You can you can see the the date on here. I mean, this is this is a case that is being done currently right now, and I'll probably uh, edit this video maybe an hour after I design it. But um, you, I uh, I just I I want to emphasize that. Uh, that yes, uh, the software doesn't always provide ideal proposals. However, it is capable with the proper steps taken before your initial proposal. And I think that thus far, you've seen how uh, simple it was. It does take some work, but you've seen how simple it was to end up with this, uh, this proposal or this, um, this uh, sort of design to start with because now comes now comes the more tedious activities such as adjusting the contacts and whatnot, but that's something you have to do anyways. Um, and although the software could make it to where all of that is automated, we're not there yet. And in the meantime, I'm gonna do my best to share with you guys, um, you know, the simplest way of creating nice anterior designs. Um, so again, all I've done so far is adjusted this contact from the lingual, and now I'm kind of working on these interproximal contacts, and we're gonna do them from the lingual as well. Um, this is not an ideal case, so uh, if, if this were an ideal case, you maybe wouldn't even have to adjust the interproximal contacts from the lingual. In fact, you probably wouldn't even have to adjust the interproximal contacts because if this were an ideal case, the software 
is built to create ideal proposals. So it'd probably be ideal if this were an ideal case, but no case is uh, ideal. You can get pretty damn close to it though. Just filling in minimal thickness. Let's take a look at the contacts, the occlusion. This first has a deep bite. Yeah, you could see how deep it is just based off of where the occlusion rests, where the occlusal contact is. Just try and eliminate it if you can't. Well, you can only do so much. Okay, now here is the bridge. So for these interproximal contacts, we don't have to worry so much about making them green, more so making them large, because you want a nice solid connector. But we're gonna have to connect this from above this occlusal point. Usually, um, you would connect it this high. And you could see that uh, none of the tools we're using here are are the form tool. Haven't even touched it yet. We're just using the uh, the shape tool, a two directional individual shape tool. And with the correct sizes and whatnot, um, that's pretty much the only tool you you really do need to use, except for maybe smoothing out these rough areas. Yeah, we're just gonna have to deal with some occlusal contact there. I don't really know what to do in that sort of situation. Um, I usually will just leave occlusion and uh, tell the doctor to spot the opposing if possible. Um, if not, uh, reduce the, the prep more. You can see we'll need to use the smooth tool here, but nothing that we've used so far is the the uh, form tool. Got a lot of minimal thickness shown over here. Again, not an ideal case. And I'm not going to pretend that this is ideal. Because it ain't. Okay, let's see where we're at now. And again, we could use the view options tool. We've got somewhat longer cuspids, but I, I just have a feeling, and you guys tell me what you think, but I just have a feeling um, that if we made these anteriors longer, given where the bite is and where the kind of kind of where the lower jaw rests, these would be quite long. And Armin, if you're out there watching this, uh, as far as the contour lines, you could see distinct contour lines uh, that were just created off of using the biogeneric individual tool and repositioning them. So, um, you know, if you want to make those any more prominent, what I would recommend is going, attacking them from like this angle, if you want to adjust the say mesial contour line and using the shape tool to bring it out. Obviously you're doing this manually, but you're using the two directional tool to, to bring it out. And by bringing it out, you're going to make it more prominent, but you got to bring it out from the correct angle. You got to position the tooth to where 
the direction that you're moving it is going to go the direction that you want it. There you go. Simple as that. And then you could even adjust this distal contour line from this angle. You can look at it from this angle. And this is something that I do with every case. I look at the tooth from every angle. There you go. And then we could do the same thing over here as well. And the emergence of this tooth is slightly different than this one, but still, it's the same concept. That's good. I'll bring this out maybe a little more. There you go. And look at it from this angle. I'd fill it in right here. Either fill it in right there, or just bring it back right here. Maybe a little bit of both. Yeah, you can see this funky equation. Okay, and this is a man. So um, we're we're stepping away from proposals now. Kind of, I'm just leading you guys into the more. Um, the, the more detailed work, but maybe you can get something out of it. Uh, this is a man, so typically you're gonna see more squared off, um, closed embrasures. Not every man, but it's just more of a masculine trait to see that on teeth. Um, so let's just kind of integrate that into, we need some patient confidentiality here, but I'm sure it's fine, it's no, no big deal. Um, we can all, keep a secret. But yeah, we're just gonna close up these embrasures a little bit and then uh, kind of square them off. And we're doing that by using the four directional tool. You can grab it either from here, if you wanna kind of bring it down and square it off, or you can grab it from here if you kinda wanna bring it out and square it off. We'll do a little bit of both, take the two directional tool got a little area right there that I didn't like. And a little area right here can be adjusted. We haven't even touched the shape tool or the form tool. We haven't even touched it. So yeah, it's not let's not let's not go there because it really isn't efficient. You're only gonna use it really to smooth out areas that um, need to be smoothed out. Or uh, another great way to use it, and I'll show you guys right now. Um, another great way to use the form tool, another good application for the form tool, other than smoothing out areas of the design, is to create uh, natural wear marks along the incisal. So I'll show you guys that in just a second. Let's, let's just take care of this. And I can move a lot faster usually, but we're just having fun now. Um, uh, usually pretty straightforward. Uh, the whole point of this video is to um, display the capabilities of the software. And you can see right here with this uh, circular tool, we're um, adjusting this contour line and we've already adjusted this distal contour line. It's good.
let's use the four directional tool to bring this edge down and out. Let's check the symmetry or the width. This one's a little bit wider. Now what we could do, especially because this is a bridge, we can widen this side. We're going to make a stronger contact and we're going to make a more symmetric. However, this one is shorter so it looks a little more squatty now, but it's kind of just the consequences of, of this particular case. You can't, can't make it perfect. You can make it as good as possible, but not perfect. We strive for perfection, though. We strive for it. Okay, now let's use some of the smooth tool. And what we're using it for is to just smooth out near the margin. We're not using it to create contour lines, uh, although you can, but we're not. We're just smoothing out areas that have like, say, indentions, that's what we'll call them. But there aren't very many because of how we position the teeth software it was easy for the software to fit the crown to the prep smooth that out because that's obviously quite rough smooth the lower jaw as well more visibility more visibility, my friends. And let me tell you, once this design is done, this dentist in particular is going to mill this case. And they can contour it after it's milled. They cannot. It's up to them. But either way, this case will look nice as soon as it goes in the mouth contoured or not it would look nicer if it were contoured after and that's why whenever I do finish a case myself I contoured after as well let's be real here and Armin that's another point that uh, I can agree with uh, the details that you put into the design on the computer it would be nice if all of that translated over to the mill obviously you're restricted to the size of the burr and whatnot. But one thing that kind of interests me is that when you 3D print a design, it captures most of that detail. So um, maybe this could lead into another discussion, but do you guys see the future of CAD CAM kind of geared towards um, crowns fabricated from uh, resin, uh, fabricated from 3D printing them? Can we get there? Uh, we're, we're already pretty much there with the temporaries and with dentures. That's kind of where it's heading. But will it head that direction with crown and bridge? Are we going to step away from milling crowns and kind of uh, gear the cam side of things more towards 3D printing uh, resin crowns? Resin crowns and strength, uh, translucency. There There is a lot of work to do there, but... Is that where we're headed? Who knows? Comment below. Let us know what you think. Use four directional tool for this right here. That's groovy. Mm. 
now kind of with this connection here we're just making it nice and vertical let's check the connection these are this is going to be a difficult connector okay we're at about eight there i'm not comfortable with that we're it's even worse over there so that's going to be a, a pretty significant obstacle but we're just about done um, one thing you can see is and we got the the contour of this cuspid to match the contour of this cuspid with very little I'll, I'll show you a few things that you can do to match it a bit more you can see that this contour line is a slightly more in front of the lateral so what we can do over here let's take the circular tool go over to four directional and grab it from that area and bring it forward that's what we're going to do There we go. There we go, Super Mario. Okay. And then this cuspid is a bit longer, so let's take the remove tool. And all we're going to do kind of reduce this tip right here because it is quite pointy. See how that looks. Not bad. Not bad at all. Grab all these. Another quick little tip. Oh, not that. Sizal variation. Let's add some anatomy. There's four. There's three. There's two. There's one. I like them all, except for on this Ponic. It looks kind of funky, so we'll adjust that a little bit. But let's leave it at about 11. And now it kind of matches the the uh, anatomy of the cuspid a bit more, too. And then let's go over to variation 5. I like this one. Let's put that at about 6. And see, when you 3D print, you get all these details. When you mill, it's hit or miss. Um, the, this will uh, come out, but these uh, horizontal lines don't always do. Okay, and I just want to adjust the anatomy. No, we'll leave it, it's fine. Try and thicken this up as much as we can. Occlusion plays a huge factor in getting a solid connection, so we may need to adjust the opposing. We, the dentist in this situation, in this case may need to adjust the opposing. And I just realized I did forget to show you how to make uh, wear marks with the removal tool, but I'll try and get there before the video ends even though this case doesn't really require it. So I'll just demonstrate it for you guys. Yeah. Not the easiest to create with the connection. Uh, 
just given the circumstances of this area. And this is the kind of everyday work that I'm doing. Um, this is a, a design case. So dentists um, had me remote in to design the case for him. Pretty, pretty straightforward. And after it's designed, they're going to mill it. There's only so much we can do with this connection. I need to sacrifice some of the aesthetics. Sorry, patient. Hopefully we're at, le at least seven. Let's get to at least seven. Oh, okay. okay, we're almost there. This little maneuver right here is going to take care of it. Sweet. Okay, now let's look at the contact of this pontic. If you remember, we set it to negative 100. I think that that's pretty ideal. That's good. Try and get it tighter up around here at the emergence area. Yeah, that's good. the connection to 777 okay And for the midline, this is this is pretty cool too. So this is my technique for the midline. You guys can adopt it if you just so choose to. But let's get it all lined up with the grid. That's good. And let's center the midline along this white line right here, right? And that's vertical, the white line. That's a vertical line. And make sure that the widths are symmetric because that's where you're going to want to set them in line. Remove the lower jaw and then remove the upper jaw. And whatever you've got hanging over this white line, that needs to be um, removed. You want to, what you want to do is get this to where it's so you can see there's a lot more overhang on this side. Then just use the form tool and remove it and then go over to number eight and remove whatever you can see on this side and then let's try and stay equal now at that point 
once you've got everything uh, lined up with that white line. And go back to the front, bring in the upper jaw, remove the contacts. It's pretty good. There you go, there you have it. That's how I do my midlines. And then, oh, we've only got one more contact. And that's this one right here. And just look at this one as if you're looking at it head on. See it kind of leans uh, over up here. That's about it. And the rest can be taken away from tooth number eight. Solid green contacts. Take the contacts away. Oh, and we've got this contact. Oh, and you could see this like lobe right here, I say we get rid of that. At least level it out. Okay. That's a completed design in the books. Um, slider looks a little bit wider. But most of what we used was the shape tool, and that's that's most of what I use when I design. Um, we've got the midline taken care of. We've got the ponic, uh, the pressure against the tissue taken care of. I wonder. It looks a bit canted. I think it may be. Let's try this. That looks a bit better to me. Well, we've got a lot of occlusion here, but there's really not much you could do with this uh, with this situation. But yeah, that's a design, another one in the books. Uh, hopefully this wasn't too boring, I guess you could say, but, um, you know, I think it got the point across, and I think that um, you guys can implement some of these techniques into your designs when you are designing an anterior case. Uh, if you have any video recommendations or any comments or whatever it may be, feel free to reach out or leave a comment below. Um, but look forward to engaging with you guys on, on the topic. Anyways, uh, talk to you guys soon.